<laughs> hey, it's Saturday at 7 p.m. Guess where you are? It's Side Dish with Doug Bookie. Uh, just as a precursor, tonight we have a studio audience. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Andrea. So um, we're tonight. We're gonna do uh, one of our like uh, when we go to parties or barbecues or things. We bring a dish and everybody asks for the recipe. So those of us who know us out there in the world, you're welcome. Here we go. So we're going to make fire roasted corn dip tonight. Um, you are a dip, but we tend to eat it around here for just about every meal. We've eaten it for a main dish. We've eaten it for a side dish. We've eaten it for an appetizer, which is what it's kind of designed for. But tonight we're going to eat it as, make it as a side dish. Recipe, it comes from Emeril Lagasse. Um, the king of Bam himself. We got it, I don't know, a number of years ago, and we have loved it ever since. So um, let's just get right into it. So this is a fairly straightforward. There's only, I don't know, what, five or six ingredients overall. Um, the real star of this is going to be fire roasted corn. Um, I pre-roasted because this takes a little bit of time. You can see it's got a lot of flour on it. That's going to be good because the kernels underneath are nice and sweet and um, they're good to go. What I'm going to do, though, is just as a demonstration, if you don't have your barbecue or you don't have something like that, um, you can do it on the stove. So that's what I've done. What I've got going over here at the moment is I have a single ear of corn. So I'm just going to take. What's on it? Uh, olive oil and salt and pepper, and that is it. And it's I'm not using a ton of olive oil and salt and pepper or olive oil in the house, uh, but you want some. Um, I am going to turn the vent on low, so I'm going to speak louder while it's doing it. Um, you want tongs as well. So basically, you're just going to get fire, and you're going to, you know, magically roast it, as the name implies. So you just Kind of, I've got it on high. Um, kind of want to get it high so it's going to char right away. So basically, that's what you're looking for. Directly on the burner. Oh, oh, I heard like popping. popping. Like popcorn, that's good. That means that it's starting. To, it's going to take some color. It's going to take. Um, it's going to caramelize, which is good because the sugars in the corn are going to be really good to caramelize. And then um, we're just going to. I'm going to take a look at it after a little while, and we're going to watch it, and we're going to turn, and we're going to turn, and turn until it looks just like it's in here. You want to do this first because if you don't do this first, the corn is going to be so hot that you're not going to be able to handle it. So you want to have it cooked pre-cooked, and then um, and then you're going to let it cool down, and then we're going, and then you're going to we're going to take it off the cob. So. Oh, I can see it's getting some color on the side there. Yeah. So let's we're see. Already, only after a few minutes, get it to court. Now I'm gonna have to readjust it because it looks like the middle where there's no real flame is not getting any color. And we have done this on a electric burner as well. Yeah, it doesn't work as well, but it can. But work. it will work. Um, Good enough. You want the fire is what you're looking for. I recommend before an electric burner, start a fire outside and do it over the fire. It's it's better that way. Um, you 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 just want the char that you're not going to really get from electric. Um, okay, so the other thing this has, it's got basically here's what we got. Well, let's go down the recipe here. It's got it's going to have black pepper, butter. It's going to have um, minced onions. We're going to have a, a yellow red, yellow pepper, quarter of a cup quarter cup of red pepper, uh, one medium jalapeno. It's going to be diced. Um, gives it a no little seeds. heat. No seeds, no membrane, because you don't want it too hot. You want it hotter, as we talked about last week uh, or the week before, put that in there. Um, you also have uh, chopped garlic, one tablespoon's worth. You have a uh, diced uh, green onion. It calls for the green part, but I find that wasteful, so just use the whole thing. Um, it's got a half pound of grated Monterey Jack cheese, a cup of mayonnaise, and um, now one thing that we've noticed that we've never done this, it also calls for a quarter cup of black olives. Of the stuff that you're going to get left over on the cob, you want, then you're going to get a bunch of it together. So 
Did I miss anything? Oh, you know, butter, and uh, and then you need tortilla chips because you usually eat it as a dip. All right, so let's take a look at the score. Adriana says your stove is on fire. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So we're getting good color on that. We'll we'll turn it here a little bit and get some more color on it. So these in front of you on the in the dish you did on the barbecue, yes? Yes, I did these. It literally on the barbecue was on high. It took tip them towards us. Okay. It took like um, I don't know, yeah. six to ten minutes total time to get them all done. I just put them. What I do is get it on the hot. Find your hot zone of your barbecue. You know you have one, and put it there. Let it sit. Go inside. Do some chopping. And when you go, oh, I gotta go outside. Ooh, and then you go outside and you turn, 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 and then you do it again. Um, we need our live studio audience to keep an eye on that burner. Yeah. We're getting a lot of comments about fire. <laughs> it's fine. It's not on fire. It's not on fire. <laughs> it's not on fire. <laughs> it's supposed to get, again, it's fire roasted, roasted people. Yes. We want it fiery. But it does pay to do it ahead of time because otherwise you have to have asbestos fingers to yeah. cut it off. You definitely. So I'm actually going to do that first um, because I want to have everything. This recipe is timed in a way that you do the you do the onions, you do the peppers together, then you add the corn, then you add the garlic, then at the end you're adding um, the, no, the garlic and the jalapenos at the same time. So basically you're just cooking those a little bit and then – that's it. Then you add everything into the bowl with the mayonnaise and the Monterey Jack cheese, and it mixes it all together, and it's going to get ooey gooey. And then we're going to bake it in the oven. Now, typically it says for about 15 minutes, but I turned up the oven so that you can see the gooiness of the end. And really, everything is cooked. All we're really doing in there is min melding it together and then um, getting the cheese nice and gooey. We have, we have comments? Yeah, John says that Adriana knows that Doug's kitchen mantra is barely controlled chaos. That is that is a correct statement. We and and Teddy seems to be a little jealous that there's a live studio audience and he's not in it. Well, maybe maybe uh, in the future we could have more live studio audiences and uh, if you'd like to join us in the live studio office, please please mail a self addressed stamp <laughs> to. And, uh, you know, we'll I see think, about drawing from the bag. I think our camera work is better today because we pulled the camera back so we could see both your face and the counter. Oh, well, this is good. See? And we put it in by Amy so that I'm looking at the camera and her and not just at Amy. So, <laughs> again, every week, just a little better. So, all right, we're getting close on this. I'm going to flip it. We've got a little bit on one side. Um, but let's. Let's get a bowl. I hope everybody um, had a nice week. We had some, I don't know, I don't know how you would put it weather-wise, interesting weather. Why are you putting it there? Why aren't you putting it in there? Because it has to go, to go in there and then into the pan. Yeah, why can't you just reuse that big bowl? This is not a game of why are you doing it that way where no one's the winner. Doug likes to uh, dirty a lot of dishes. So, I think we talked about that before. So, yeah, I take a sharp knife. Again, we talked about knives last week. I sharpened this again this week, and we're just we're just going down. Um, you, If you have a, a kind of a rimmed, shallow pan that works, this baking dish High is dish? – that might work, but this is this rimmed baking is too it's too hot. You end up hitting the knife on it before you go Whoa. there. What's snapping? What's snapping? I don't know. Is that what the kids are saying now? What's snapping, What's everybody? Snapping? Uh, I think we got, we are on fire now, so let's take this off. Are you saying your board is lit? <laughs> <laughs> so again, we're again taking the corn off of here. Um, this is my, I've done this where you forget to do it and it's much hotter than this and you're like, ah, ah, my fingers are on fire. But um, don't forget, save your cobs. You can feed them to your worms or you can feed them to the compost. They do take a while to break down, but um, they'll, do their, they'll do their business. I did do a little research regarding the uh, turning compost bins that you ate, mm -hmm. but that we own. Yeah. And uh, it said that if you add some soil to it, 
I've uh, done that. Nutrient. Oh, darn. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Um, I really thought I had the solution. I know. They're just terrible. You just need open air bins, really, um, because they get that, you know, composting is aerobic and anaerobic at the same time. So it needs the air to be able to flow into everything. Yeah. So let's make some room here because I got two more cobs to do plus a fifth that's going to be super hot. So you're going to watch me play that dance. Um, we are, um, every, everybody is in June. I was about to say we're in June, but that doesn't, that's not how time works. So uh, I'm going to just take this off. So again, I've got basically what I'm looking for here in terms of that. Oh, here we go. There you go. All right, let's turn the fire off. Uh, we're so you're gonna want a very big vessel. This is a good one. It's high sided. Um, it's got a lot of surface because you want to get everything on the and, and kind of get good and even on a layer so you get good grounding. Even more so than we're already doing. So, all right, so. This is um, this is a time in a regular show where some, there'd probably be some sort of uh, time lapse or um, music overlay, but we don't have that here at Seismic. What we have is good old fashioned babbling and um, quips, and I'm not very good at either. So, well, babbling I'm pretty good. But, so you probably ask me, Doug, what would you make? What would you make this with? You can make it just by itself. I've eaten the whole container of this by itself, and I'm not ashamed to say that. It's really good. Anybody who's ever had it in, in a, in a, could probably attest to that as well. It's sweet. It's spite, a little spicy. It's real good. Let's just put it that way. Now, I'm up here. I knew... That if anybody was going to make mention that we had a live studio audience today, it would be Ted. Because, you know, I don't know. I just figured he'd be jealous that he wasn't the first one to get the bill in the live <laughs> studio audience. <clears throat> well, 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 we'll remedy that soon. All right, this is very hot, but just grab it. <laughs> Grab it up at the top. <laughs> Not, I was going to say grab it by the tip, but that seems dirtier than it is. So I just said it anyways, but just so you know. Uh, if you have those uh, corn on the cob, oh yeah, pork things, right? You sure could, Denise. Mm -hmm. Question from the audience: Could you use a fork if you couldn't hear that very well? You could do that. As Amy said, you could also if you got corn on the cob ones. That I think that is it weird. Do you think that the corn on the cob holders are often shaped like corn on the cob? No, I think that says their purpose. I don't know. I think that's like. I don't know. That'd be like if you Does were. Does anybody still have those anymore? That's the question. Yeah, I mean, some, some seems of these generational. Are. You do? Of course you do. <laughs> Andrea lazy, has everything. You have a lazy butler. <laughs> you have a lazy butler. No, I do have a puking cat gravy boat. Though. Oh yes. <laughs> and a thorn mug. I do. And a thorn mug. Do that. All right. All right. So now, now that we got our corn, this is good. Um. We want it. Don't get rid of this. We need this as our cooking vessel. The great part about it is you have all of that olive oil, and salt, and pepper that was in there um, already. So this is going to help season it, and you're also going to get a lot, a little bit of that. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, the dogs got some new toys today, so they're making some squeaks, and Denise is running around trying to stop the squeaking. Yeah. So thank you, Denise. Yeah. Okay. We need. Uh, hey, butter. So uh, we need all of that. Look at how I got your stuff all set up for you. I know this production assistance. I'm gonna. I might have to oh, start yeah, paying I need you someday. Um, but we'll get there. So it takes a lot of butter, but there are a lot of veg here to sort of cook down and stuff. So. Um, what was that? Half a stick? I'd say about a half a stick. You probably want a half a stick. I think it calls for, in the old recipe. 
um, it calls for one tablespoon of butter, which I think one tablespoon of butter is half a stick. If I'm, or no, no, that's no. one slice of it. Not so that, even. that seems like a lot then. Never mind. Anyways, here we go. Yeah, back to this Paula Deen over here. <laughs> <laughs> Butter. Not less, less racism. <laughs> anyway. Hey. Ow, ow. Um, all right. So, first thing we're going to do is, since we've already re-roasted the corn, um, let us, I think we, oh, yeah. Yeah. Four these. tablespoons of butter is half a stick. Adriana would like to remind you. Oh, yeah, nut. It's, hey, I've never heard anybody complain, and I, like, you know, it's true. I, I pretty much do this all the time. <clears throat> Not today. We're uh, <laughs> watching our waist. No. Plus, if you if you uh, if you cook on the, the the stove top, you get the added benefit of when you're using that burner, an extra kind of burning corn smell from the corn being on there. So just think about how that's going to really make your life easy. And then when you're when the garlic hits that, it's going to be good. Yeah, of course. As we discussed last week, you can, you too could be a gourmet chef chef with fresh chopped garlic. <laughs> so again, we got that going. So we're going to add in our um, now the recipe calls for a cup. This is probably a little over a cup of, of, of minced oh my God. Uh, onions. So, sorry, I'm, I, we're we're in the middle of devising a plan to have a camera over by the um, food, um, but that requires me buying another camera, which seems to be impossible in our in our in our post-COVID world, in which you have to do everything remote. So, you'll have to deal with my back for a little, every once in a while. Okay, now, like everything in life, we need to spice it up. Hey, dogs, could you not do that right now? Every time. Um, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> Thank you, Lino. Um, so, we want to, let's go ahead and just get a little salt and pepper on this. Um, that it lean, it's going to lend the, the onions and the peppers really well. Um, and then this is going to get a little stirred. I want to get everything nice and coated in that. And this is only going to cook for, what, two and a half minutes, maybe. And then we're going to add the corn. A lot of it, as you can see. Five ears for the corn. And then that cooks for another, like, two minutes. Then we add in the jalapenos and the garlic, and then we're gonna do that. So while we're doing that, let's measure out one cup of mayonnaise. And you're thinking to yourself, oh, a cup of mayonnaise, that seems like a lot. Yeah. Nobody said this dish was good for you. So, all right. I'll just use the same spoon I use for butter. Let's not waste not long enough. So this is um, Adriana says they're okay with your backside any day. Woohoo! And Teddy's being sassy. He asked if an electric stove would work, and I said, of course. And now he wants to know about an induction stove. Oh, that's a good point. See, now we we talked about buying an induction stove top for this side of the uh, so I could just do all the cooking here, um, and you'd be able to see it. That's still an option, but. It's sort of six, one half dozen the other in terms of uh, what the costing is. So I'm trying to figure out what would be better overall. Use what I have, buy a camera, and go forward. What do we, somebody else is being sassy? No, Adriana wants to know what kind of wine I'm having tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's white. I know that much. Mind Bender Chardonnay. Yeah. Yeah, Mind Bender Chardonnay. Remember, kids, it's hot outside. Stay My hydrated. <laughs> no, it isn't because the problem is, is I've got an apron on. So, all right. So this is this is already starting to take uh, go translucent and soften up a little bit. So I'm going to add the corn. Right, that would be It should. If you don't spell it correctly, it should tell you. That's the wonders of the internet. It just tells you what's wrong, and then you can correct it. Okay, so we add the corn in. Again, all we're doing is really mixing that up. 
Um, at this point, I'm not going to add salt and pepper. I'm going to get the garlic jalapeno in there, and then I'm going to season it again. I want it. I want to taste it at that point because at that point we're going to mix it in with the, the mayo and the Monterey Jack cheese. So you want to have the flavorings pretty much done at that point. Can we see what's in your pan? No, it's a secret. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. So um, I've actually made this mixture with a few more vegetables in it. And it was like a hot corn succotash. Ooh, man. That was pretty good, too. Anything that has, like, fresh corn on the cob, because you're going to get that, you know, you're going to get the corn sweetness that's going to be from the fresh corn. And so, like, I mean, how can you go wrong? It's, like, great for summer. Um, but, all right, so that's going to go for about a minute or so. And like I said, you're, this is what we're looking at for garlic and, and jalapeno. I mean, not much at all. You're going to get some heat from the jalapeno. That's but, just one, right? Well, it's, one, it's supposed to be one medium, but the one I had was small, so I made I made two smalls. And how much garlic? Uh, it's one tablespoon, so about two, you know, two cloves worth, basically. Um, Avery's watching you. She says hello. Oh, uh, excellent! I'm glad that I'm I'm on the big screen on some people's you TVs. You have to say hello to her specifically. Avery, I see you, and hello. It's almost time for you to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Here we go. So this is passing the smell test. So let's go ahead and get the garlic in there. And you just want to get it in there. Because it's gonna we're gonna mix it up and then it's gonna start smelling real good again. So I will show you shortly if you look Okay. I've got the heat up a little higher tonight than I normally would. You want this medium, medium high heat. Just watch it. Don't walk away. Everything is, you know, it's going to be fun. That's going to go maybe a minute, like one minute. You want the garlic to bloom. You want it to smell really good. You do not want it to get overcooked or brown. Because the brownie is going to cause bitterness, and the bitterness is just not going to taste good. Nobody wants that. All right. Get yourself a gigantic bowl. You want room for stirring. This is going to be that. So we're going to take our Monterey Jack cheese. How much? One half pound. Shredded. We have uh, experimented with this in the past by adding the whole pound of cheese. And I know if you're a cheese lover, this seems mm. counterproductive, but the less cheese in this, the go by the recipe, and that's what's good. <coughs> so apparently the dog wants back in from outside. Oh. All right. Cheese. Or wants cheese. You heard cheese. Yeah. So um, you're going to put, just mix these two together. And. Waste not, want not, folks. All right. And I'm going to use the same spoon here because it's good and it's wide and it's real good. That's what you want. Um, okay. Now, again, this is kind of what you want. You want the vegetable soft. You want the onion translucent. You want a real, real fragrant, and you want, and you're just going to dump it in. Um, now, hot and everything, that's the best part. The hot's going to help break down the, or melt, start melting the cheese. All right. Really don't want to leave any goodness in there. Okay. Now, I like to give it a little mix up here before I add the green onion. Um, cause I don't want to, I want the green onions to go in at almost like the very last moment because they're, I don't want them to get, uh, lose that green color. Oh man. So the, it smells really great in here. First of all, the studio audience is drooling, but <laughs> what you're smelling, the other thing that's really awesome is like mm -hmm. mixing it together with the mayonnaise, which is oil based, you know, and it's, and it's got egg in it and 
the cheese is it starts to bloom even more with some of the um, the garlic and the jalapeno, and it the jalapeno really comes through sort of um, it even kind of sweetens up a little bit. So it's a really great, you know, really good stuff. All right, so this is what you're looking for. I'm zooming in. Hold on. Oh, oh, wow, we're getting fancy. Up I here. know. I'm getting really good at this. Yeah. So we've got uh, it's stringy. The mayonnaise is well incorporated. Um, okay, this is we're ready to go from this to this. We don't need this anymore. But we want to do this first. Like I said, that's one green. That's basically one whole green onion mixed in. And that's the uh, that's also going to get activated when you add it to the heat, and it's going to, you know, that flavoring is going to get really good. All right, now you can use your spoon, but since I like to dirty more dishes than there are, I'm going to use a spatula so that we do not lose any of this goodness in here. This is and only, you don't have to grease the dish because you're using the same dish that you yes, had the corn in. Exactly. And it's already been like olive oil and stuff like that. So we get this in here. <clears throat> and really, this is done. This is cooked. Everything in here is cooked. But we want it to get, as Emerald would say, happy. Yeah. Um, so if this is his recipe, we'll use one of his lines today. Um, Again, make sure you get all that good stuff out of there. And we've been making this for so long, I didn't even know that it called for black onions. Black olives? You mean? I mean, black olives, yeah. <laughs> black onions, that'd be weird. I'm sure that there's. I a, think there is a thing. That well, there's black, black garlic, garlic, which is fermented garlic. There probably could be uh, black onions, fermented black onions, I guess. Okay, that's not the point. The point it, is the black olives. Yeah. Anyways, it does not need black. It does not need oh, black. All right, so I'm just putting. The, I'm spreading this. I'm, look at this. It's, it's very flat. Yep. <clears throat> now, let's talk. Let's talk about oven. Uh, typically, you want to set Hold this. Up. Oh, okay, sorry, right. I moved too much. I moved too fast. This is the this is the <laughs> amateur hour of, of me moving and we forget what's happening. 400, I've got it to 450 just to uh, improve the speed of cooking here. Um, center wrap, let that go. And we're going to check on this in about five minutes. Okay, and probably, it's probably going to go faster than that. But take this opportunity to take every single bowl that you dirty today, which is all of them in the box case, and uh, just, uh, just don't worry about it, put them in the sink. So, you can eat this with a fork if you're a glutton, but if you're a sophisticated person, get some chips. Um, corn chips. Oh, Denise brought chips too. Okay, so we got we got we got we got plenty of chips, but um, scoops. scoops. Scoops are the best. Yeah. Um, have you ever had these late harvest tortilla chips? They're so good. They're so good. I don't know what it is. They're just real good about it. Um, they're thick, they're delicious. But any tortilla chip will work. Scoops uh, is really good just because you can get uh, basically scooped filled, and it's, it's delicious. Um, chips are sweeter than the season. That's true. <laughs> they are? No, <laughs> you're just being sassy. <laughs> so, all right. Um, Lino claimed that the uh, late July chips were sweeter later in the season. Like grapes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> All right. So what are we having uh, with this side dish uh, is going to accompany. We're making burgers tonight. Um, we're eating a little later. We've already had uh, first dinner, which was uh, pasta that Lino made. And now. And it's called. Cacio e pepe. Cacio e pepe. Yeah, Cheese and pepper. So good. So it's really good. Um, so we're going we're gonna to do that. And um, I don't know. We're good. Are we? Are we? Uh, are we? Are we? We're, we're kind of trucking today in terms of time. We are. I like we it. Only so, uh, not even half an hour yet. Almost yeah. Half an hour. So that's the good thing about this. If you pre, if you can get like, it's, I mean, you're looking at an extra 10, 15 minutes to get the 
it's everything kind of prepped. I recommend getting it prepped because if you're going to be if you're going to be taking it somewhere or getting it ready for here, you you can set it up as a as a dish as a as an appetizer, which is typically what we do. But again, uh, we eat it enough as a side dish that um, sort of warranted me just saying we're going to make it tonight, and it's really good with the burgers too. So. I'm trying to think of something sassy to answer, and I <clears throat> I can't. What is it? Uh, folks want to know how they score tickets to the show. Well, <laughs> they send me a check. Yeah, I, mean, I said yeah, first come first serve basis. So I don't want to say that the best offer. This show kind of is in its infancy, and we're always looking for support. So bribery will get you everywhere. Um, that's always good. The second option is you could probably just text me or text Amy and say, Hey, we'd like to sit in the audience and we could do that. But, um, yeah, so, uh, we, we didn't intend on having a live studio audience, but I mean, we're doing this live and, uh, why not? You know, we'll have people here. Maybe, maybe we'll make that a new thing, you know, every other one or everyone, maybe we'll have people over. So we are still looking for suggestions for, uh, Things people want to see, yeah? No. Yeah. I guess I need to set up, should I set up other outlets for this? Like, should I have a Facebook page that you can post things to? Mm -hmm. Should I set up an email address you can email things to, a Twitter account? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I could do all that, but you're going to, you're looking at your social media director. So it's not like it's going to be any more uh, of, a, <laughs> of a show than anybody else is going to get. So. Oh, what do we got here? Billy says that he can bring you Korean grandma as a co-host. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry. Can I sit in on that one? <laughs> yeah, that's a sh that was a second show idea where my friend Teresa's mom is here and lives with them now. I mean, she's uh, Korean and she's this big and I'm this big. And we thought, wouldn't it be funny if it was Doug and the Korean grandma and we made dishes where one week I made a dish that she's never had before and one week she makes a dish I've never had before. I think this is a gold mine. And then we and then we have, you know, the banter back and forth. Tell them how the kimchi experiment went. Oh, so if you don't know, uh, before when I was, I did Facebook Live stuff before this, I made kimchi. And the kimchi actually turned out pretty good. Uh, I got seal of approval from the Korean grandma, but I also... Uh, it's a little watery. It's a little watery. So we're going to work on that. I actually have more Napa cabbage in the fridge right now. Probably Maybe tomorrow. I don't know. Tomorrow might be a, we'll see a do-it-yourself type of a day in terms of I might make some bread. Maybe we'll make some kimchi. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll feed the kombucha. Uh, we got this, I fed my sourdough today so we can make sourdough bread tomorrow. Woo! That's the magic Ooh. bell. Okay. All right. So. Is it bubbling on the side? It is not bubbling. It is not ready. So that's what you're, okay. Let's take a look at it real quick. Yes, yes, yes. It smells ridiculous. But what you want is you want to be able to see through the pan and on the top, it should start bubbling. I would imagine another five minutes is going to do that. So I can tap to answer another five minutes if that's what it takes, but. Um, now your kimchi is uh, good. Well, that's five hours and not five minutes. Now and now you turn the stove off. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna turn it up too. Okay, cool. Um, and not as spicy as Korean bread. Right, which Billy says is is the is is a plus. So, um, but I'm trying to go for that authentic. I have uh, other friends who who really liked it as well. But um, you have any left? Do I have any? Yeah, that's fine. Hold on. As I walk off frame, Ooh. don't ever walk off frame according to TV. But you know what? <laughs> but we do have a nice kitchen, though, to look at. Sure. This is all I got left. I've been eating it a little bit here and there, but it's um, it's really gonna really fill the house up with a sweet kimchi flavor. Do you like kimchi? Mmm. No. Kimchi fried rice. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. All right, well, have Lino try it. Do you like it? Do you want a little? Andrea does I'm not really like it. Tired. Amy does That's not love it. it. No, it's all right. It's all right. You didn't have to try it. Yeah. I won't put you on TV. <laughs> I won't put you on there. We just want to know if you like it. Um, okay, Kim, she to other friends and not to me, Adriana said. Well, this was during quarantine. It's sort of, I knew somebody, I knew that Chris and Lindsay Ellington would really appreciate it. So uh, I took it to them. 
and they did really appreciate it. So well, the kimchi smells good. Yeah. Yeah. It smells like kimchi. It's like hot and sweet. And yeah. 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 Um, I, I, I also have, uh, I, I'm getting ready to harvest my uh, worm poo from my worm compost so I can have, uh, I can add it to the garden. But that's a uh, summer like worm poo. That's true. <laughs> um, so that's a project that's going on. Is everybody planting a garden this year? You should. It's the, it's the way, it's the way forward. I've got, my um, I've got some tomatoes in the ground, my cucumbers and my peas are starting to come up right now. I've got peppers I started. Um, I'm, I'm gonna make, uh, that's a thing we might do, is I'm gonna make um, fermented hot sauce. So we'll do part one, and we're gonna do like a Tabasco type sauce, or uh, uh, hot sauce. I am growing Tabasco peppers. So um, I'll make a vinegar-based fermented, you know, hot sauce. But that will be something we do. Maybe it'll be a special edition <laughs> when we, uh, we do that. So, for Christmas. so the brown sitters have a garden going. I'm pretty sure the Christians or the voice Christians. Christiansons have a garden going. Um, John and Adriana have a garden going. And you should invite, uh, uh, didn't Chris and Lindsay make a hot sauce for their wedding? They did. Maybe I can invite them on and we can have a special episode. Like I said, you know, like have those special after school specials, but they won't be such a downer, like, you know, that special dip of strokes. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that, that, that's a joke. If you're, if you're 38 and older, that's a joke for you. Yeah. So. Hey, my kids watch school. We watch after school special. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You're 38 and older. No, no. Shaw kids. If you're out Ooh. there, Shaw kids, give a shout out for after school special. Redeem Shaw is fast. So I'm sitting you basically. We know Colt 22 is your friend Colton. That's Colton. Colton works for me. Hi, Colton. Colton's roommate is growing ghost peppers. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that's hot. Yeah. Then ghost peppers are hot, Jack Mosley. <laughs> <laughs> so this is get, this is almost done. The, it's starting to bubble, but it's going to be real good when it comes out. And John yeah. built Adriana raised garden bed, a raised garden bed, but then he had to add an annex today because her plants weren't socially distant. Yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Oh, that. you went on camera again. That's okay. I'm just, you know, I'm putting. I was putting things away. I thought you would like that. Um, all right, 59 seconds, and this is going to be this is going to be a gold mine. Um, you can take this if you make this. Um, you're going to be the envy of all your friends. Everywhere we take this, they ask for the recipe. For a long time, we wouldn't give it, give it to them, even though we stole it from Emerald. But um, then we just said it's Emerald's. We didn't steal it. He gave it willingly. Well, that's true. We found it and then we used it. But uh, then we just tell people after a while that it's Emerald's Flower Roasted Corn Dip. And then, you know, either they made it or they didn't. I don't know. Nobody ever reported back. They just waited for us to bring it. And uh -huh. there we are. Um, <laughs> why make something when we can bring it and it's probably better? I'm just kidding. You can make it. It's probably good. All right. 15 seconds. Let's listen. You want to do a countdown? 10, 9. I don't know. Is it bubbling on the side? Oh, bubbles. yeah. I see oh, bubbles yeah. on the side. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's good. It's good. what you good. want. Bubbles. Oh. Actually, I'm going to take two. They're small. You got me on cam? Yes. Okay. There we go. I'm better Where? at this today. All right. I've had just the right amount of wine. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So. Oh, yeah. You can. It's also yes. good because if you don't do this. Don't it by you. Tip towards uh, us. Hold on. I'm just I'm making a point here. If you tip it, it starts to ooze one way or the other. It's like the lava. And it's also starting to brown. And that's good. So that's what we want to see. Okay. That's it. We did it. We made it through another episode, everybody. Yay. Uh we're 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 40 we're, minutes in. One month. Four weeks we've done this. I think they say after 21 days of doing something that it's like a habit now. Um <laughs> technically we've only done it four days. But a month has gone by. So, you know, it's the same. Um, I want to uh, thank everybody who continues to show up every week and support us. It means a lot, your comments uh, through Facebook or email or, or, you know, text is really important to us. It kind of keeps us going. Um, also, anybody who's told anybody about this or anything like that is great. Share it far and wide. If you haven't already subscribed, go and hit the subscribe button. And, uh, and then hit the bell. 
because that will tell you when we're going to broadcast next. We usually do um, – it's Saturday, 7 p.m. Pacific time. You can't miss it. We're going to be here as much as we possibly can. If it's going to be a different time frame, we'll do that. Um, again, thank my live studio audience. Woo! We did great today. <laughs> Uh, as always, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife and uh, producer, Amy. And, um, you know, remember, go go outside, be kind to people, be loyal, and, you know, do something nice for somebody. Have a good week, everybody. We'll see you next week. That's good job. <laughs>